What is going on everybody and welcome back to Truck and Roll. I have a very fun video for you today. I'm gonna to show you two ways to very inexpensively and easily improve the drivability of your new Holley Sniper. Like many of you watching this video, you may have recently installed or previously installed a Holley Sniper or Super Sniper on your car or truck. I'm gonna address two drivability issues that I think are very easy to correct. The first is gonna cost you next to nothing and is gonna drastically improve how your car or truck leaves from a dead stop. You may have noticed, especially if you have a manual transmission, that after installing your Holley Sniper, there's almost a stiff spot in the throttle when you first start giving it the gas. Let's say you're at a stoplight and you're trying to leave smoothly. You're not trying to race, you're in a neighborhood, you're just trying to take off nicely on your way to work. You start pressing the accelerator pedal and you feel a lot of feedback on your foot like there's high spring pressure. You keep pushing and all of a sudden the throttle blades snap open. What happens? Your car or truck takes off. This is not what you want. You want a nice smooth transition. Now, you may have done a little bit of research online and seen that there's kind of two options with how you can control the throttle blade. You could do a progressive or a linear linkage. That's one way of doing it, but I'm here to tell you I don't think it is the best, and I want to tell you what I mean. When you purchase your Holley Sniper, it is going to be set up to have a linear linkage, meaning when I open the throttle, both blades come open at the same time. Now, it is possible to change this. You can have it set up so that you only open the primaries to a certain percentage, usually around 40% before the secondaries come open. Now, this will help the issue that I just described, but I've ultimately found you are leaving power and performance on the table. There's a much easier way to do it. You don't need to go into the computer. You don't need to buy any extra parts. All you need to do is improve the mechanical advantage of your linkage. Let me show you what I mean. This was installed as somewhat of a temporary solution. And I do need to be honest here, I did plan to enlarge this bracket, which I'm showing you to make it a little bit thicker. I wanted to test it to make sure it works, and I will do that. But for the sake of this video, it's fine as it is. Now, normally, right here where your throttle cable attaches and goes back to your pedal, this would be lowered down. However, you can get yourself a small piece of aluminum or steel, drill some holes in it, and basically move the point at which the throttle cable picks up to higher. It gives you more mechanical advantage. So what does this do to drive a billet? We're using a lever arm to decrease the amount of effort required on your foot. Now you could adjust this the length above where the original pickup point is to whatever you desire. At some point, you would probably run into some spatial issues with your air cleaner, um, and I'll give you the measurements on mine so you don't need to guess, but what I can tell you this does is when you start to press the gas, there's way less pedal effort required for the throttle blades to open. This allowed me to return my linkage from a progressive linkage, which I tried initially, to a linear linkage. And what this does right off the bat is you have more power because you have more air coming into your engine at a lower RPM, but it is much more controllable. So. Let me get out some calipers and that way I can easily show you how much extra space you should add. So this is the distance and bolt hole centers that you should make up when you're making a bracket like this. It's very simple. In my design, I've added just about an inch. Trust me, I'm not lying here. I know it may not be easy to read the calipers, but from the pickup point initially to where I now have it placed. Now, these measurements right here, you can easily take with the Holley Sniper off the car. You just need to match the bolt hole centers. This is the location where the throttle cable used to attach. Now we have it up higher. So that was my first tip. Um, again, I'll try and provide some pictures here, some panning shots so you can see exactly what I did. Any questions, just hit me up. And chances are I will be remaking this part in the future just so it's a little bit beefier. When I do that, I can actually make up a little drawing for you so you can see exactly the same size I use. But for the time being, this should give you the idea. Now, I told you that I was gonna show you two tips and that was just the first. The second is more of something that I think is both pesky and potentially could affect horsepower. And that is the whistling noise that you are hearing under part throttle. Now, if you have a certain type of intake or maybe certain type of throttle body spacer, um, this may not be the case. But in my situation, running either a dual plane intake with no spacer or with an open spacer, one and a half inches tall, 
I was noticing that I was getting some whistling noise at part throttle, very annoying and easily audible in the cabin of the truck, even with my full three inch exhaust. So I spoke to Holly and this is what they said I should do. Now, I want you to not pay attention to this portion initially. So currently on the truck, I do not have this spacer. I have an open element, so it's just a rectangular hole, one and a half inch tall spacer. Now, this adds plenum volume, which can be beneficial. However, it does not do anything to help the noise that you're hearing. After speaking with Holly, I recently learned that what you want is a four hole spacer, and this will correct that annoying sound. However, I wanted to go a step further. So there are kits out there where you can just buy um, a small thin plate with gaskets on each side that allow you to basically install a four hole spacer directly on top of your intake and that should correct the sound. So you don't need this expensive Wilson Racing, you know, taper bore spacer to correct the sound. You can do it with just a standard four hole spacer, but I like to do things a little bit better here and potentially address another issue that I'm having. And that's why we are going to talk about this Wilson four hole tapered one and a half inch tall spacer. If you watch shows like Engine Masters or you read articles online, you may learn that in some instances, engines would like more plenum volume. Um, and an easy way to do that is to add a carburetor spacer, in this case, a throttle body spacer to space up the bottom of your throttle body or carburetor from the top of the intake manifold. Cool thing about this is they have this machined um, portion here, which is supposed to help direct airflow down into the engine. Now, one of the issues I'm having on my truck, and you may not notice this, or it may not be an issue for you if you don't have two wideband oxygen sensors, but I'm noticing that I am getting different air fuel readings on each side of the engine. Let me explain what I'm talking about. When you install your Holly Sniper, you are gonna be required to install at least one oxygen sensor bung in one of your header pipes. Typically, this is done on a vehicle uh, where all of your primaries have merged into one. They tell you exactly where to put it in the orientation. So normally, on your standard setup, you are gonna see um, an oxygen sensor in one of your two headers. Now, this is what the Holly is going to use to tune the engine, and that's fine. However, in my situation, I went ahead and installed another one on the other side. So I have two oxygen sensors, one on each side of the engine. Now I can see what the Holly is adjusting based off of, and I can't remember if that's the driver or the passenger side, but I can also see the other sensor. And what I'm seeing is a difference between the two sensors. Like right now, for example, this is like 13.7, 13.8 at cruise. That's at almost a point sensors is reading anywhere from a half a point to one full point um, richer than the other. So I'm definitely leaving some power on the what tape. What I'm hoping to do with this uh, Wilson Racing tapered port, uh, tapered bore spacer is to try and get better mixture in between both sides of the engine. Now these spacers come in different sizes. Um, you can get one inch, one and a half inch, and two inch tall. This one is part number 004130. Adding a taller spacer, which means your stock bolts will probably not fit. Did some quick research online, and these are longer um, carburetor to manifold studs that you may need. These are from ARP. They are part number 200-2408. Now, again, since you're installing this, you're no longer just going to have, let's say you had no spacer before, you're going to need two styles of gasket. So we've got the four hole for one side, and then we've just got the standard on the other. And you do wanna pay attention to which way this goes. When I initially looked at this, my brain said, hey, look, that's got a cool milled effect here. This side goes up, but that is incorrect, indicated by the way they put Wilson Racing on there. So actually, you want it this way. So the side facing your engine is going to be this, which is kind of counterintuitive to me, but we'll see how it goes. So let's throw on a time lapse. I'll go ahead and take off the old existing uh, open element spacer and I will put this in and I'll show you the two differences on the bench. So just a couple differences here. This is what was removed. Um, <laughs> I actually kind of eyeballed this wrong. This is a one inch. I'm going to one, on, one and a half. See that difference here when I kind of move the camera down. Doesn't make a huge change, but the big change here is all this is doing is just adding plenum volume, whereas this one actually has our four, um, our four hole spacer. So this in and of itself should just eliminate that whistling noise. And then here's the trick part right here. Look at all that 
milled goodness. Step two, of course, and this is especially true if you're going to a taller one like I did. I'm glad I bought the right hardware. ARP on the right versus just your standard on the left. You can see it's much taller. Um, these just have a nice little kind of rounded head. And as always, the threads are super smooth. They come with washer. And uh, yeah, go ahead and throw this on. checked hood clearance. Um, as you can see, this is pretty easy to install. It did raise everything up. So if you don't have a truck, you may need to consider this if you're going to a taller spacer um, or a different style air cleaner or nut or something like that. But this does appear to clear on the truck. So we're gonna go ahead and fire it up and uh, hopefully it starts. Well, good news and bad news. So took it on a test drive. I will say the Wilson uh, four hole spacer, four hole spacer worked well in that I no longer have a whistling sound. So that is totally good. Um, air fuel ratio is still off from bank to bank. And, and honestly, that was a little bit of a long shot, whether or not this would correct that. But um, I spoke to the tuner, our local tuner here, and his advice was to jack the truck up, switch the oxygen sensors and see if it follows the sensor or it follows the bank, meaning like that side of the motor, that cylinder head. So we're gonna go ahead and jack it up, check that out and see, and honestly go from there. But overall, um, I will say, you know, the, the four hole spacer did what Holly said it would do. It got rid of the noise and then that's a good thing because that noise was quite frustrating. And I've also read, um, that those four hole spacers can also help just throughout mid range with, with power and torque. And that's what I've seen on some shows and whatnot. So let's go ahead and jack this up, switch, switch the sensors, take it for a drive and see what happens. And then we'll... All right, let's wrap this video up. So I just swapped the sensors from bank to bank, went out, took it on a drive. The sensors themselves looked almost identical. I didn't see one that looked like it was way darker or lighter than the other one. Um, the problem still persists, so I still have one bank that is about half a point richer than the other. Um, it almost seems when I swapped the leads that it got a little better. Instead of being like 0.5 to 1 off, it was roughly only 0.5, but it's hard to tell when you're driving and looking. So um, I'm going to let it cool off, you know, make, make those zip tie over the wires out of the way, make it all permanent. And, uh, and that'll be it. So basically to wrap everything up, um, hey, install yourselves a four hole spacer if you don't wanna hear whistling. And if you want less pedal effort, add that little spacer on there that I showed you. And um, hey, best of luck. This is why we do these things. We gotta keep tweaking. So obviously it's not perfect after this video. I'm gonna do some more research, maybe get some new sensors, maybe try a different intake manifold, who knows. But you will have to watch that next time on the next video from Trek and Roll. Thanks again. Have a good day.